well thanks for clicking on um, I've been reading this it's Morris's autobiography uh, published a couple of years ago it's a thick book 457 pages and it's uh, controversial because he's so downbeat and critical but I've uh, turned the pages down on a few bits to quotes that have really meant quite a bit to me now this is page 52 and uh, he's talking about um, how the working class have been portrayed in a poor way in British films since the war really between the war and 1962 and uh, no rampantly challenging mind could overlook the lost cultures as mapped out in British film wherein the restricted horizons of the expendable working class thrillingly show us how British life got to where it is now in your private modern cuckoo land. A gaslit hallway in a tired lodging house and I pulled in with mum forever fussing about at the table setting tea. Distorted by nostalgia we see in the family and in the local community everything an honest soul might need in order to live out their time on the human grid line. And we see the obvious punishments for anyone who insists upon more than their lot. In my favourite films of the 40s, 50s and 60s, the working class are usually portrayed as children, enacting pointless working class crimes. We always see the police as adults, representing a conscience for the daft scrubbers in pubs and dance halls, who are not rich and therefore cannot behave themselves. Decent folk always allow themselves to be controlled by the police because the police are never known to be either devious or wrong. The labouring class boys of grey flannel are instinctive in their behaviour because they are, in fact, in possession of nothing at all other than instinct. Science and diplomacy are tools unused. I think I've got the gist of what Morris is trying to say. Um, I'm not sure whether these people in grey flannels, or whether he's referring to the police there as sort of like uh, slaves of the state, or whether, or whether the whether the working class are being portrayed as um, people who just don't think um, and don't use their uh, diplomacy or um, don't understand science. I'm not sure about that. Anyway, you get the picture. And the th thought in my mind comes up about art reflecting culture, but then culture reflects art. So I believe that you always have to be careful in the way that you um, create uh, novels, films, because the chances are that culture is going to start to reflect them. And I think they understood this in the 1940s with the propaganda films. That, you know, they knew that films were propaganda and, and they were going to influence people. I think that may have got lost uh, later on. And when we think of films like Train Spotting, um, now that really. Uh, I, I know I know there's the sort of anti-war film type culture or train spotting the anti-drugs type culture but the trouble is with the anti-war film it everybody doesn't get it and, and some people you know they just love the violence and with the drugs films like train spotting people just are intrigued by the drugs um, so it's a difficult line to draw and but I, I would be much happier uh, if if um, if films were a little bit more propagandaish and and portraying a, the good life, the good living, that sort of thing, I'm a bit of a Mary Whitehouse, if if I've got the right name there, who was a campaigner for right living, and I think um, 
if, if, if in, in films people are portrayed as right living, I think there's a chance that in life they might be right living. If in films we go over the top with violence, or in video games over the top with violence, I think there's a chance that uh, in society people will go over the top with violence. Now may, people may think this is a naive view, and maybe I am naive, but that's it and all about it. Okay, that's my first instalment of the Morrissey autobiography. Like it, like it, it's good. Read it. It's not really hard going. Right, bye.